Good morning. Welcome to House and Gate of Heaven Church. Who's excited this morning? Woo! Wow, that is amazing. I am so like speechless. That was amazing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this precious morning that you have given us, Lord. Thank you for all of those who are joining with us, Lord. We pray, God, that this service be blessed, anointed. I pray, God, that your presence be so strong in this place, Lord, and with those, Lord, and wherever they're at, their homes, their cars, wherever they are, Lord Jesus, be with them, Father God. Fill them with your spirit, God. I pray that today, Lord, will be so mighty, Lord, in worship and in the word, Father, so that your glory can just do as you please in this place, Father. We thank you, Father God. We bless your holy name. And the church says, Amen. Amen.
miracles happen, that's when signs and wonders happen, when we're saying, show me your glory, we're asking God to show us himself, hallelujah, God is a God of peace, God is a God of joy, God is a God of comfort, hallelujah, oh, we want to see your glory, Jesus, oh, we want to see your glory, Jesus, oh,
is breathing on you. I've been there, my sister or brother. It says here, but the for you protect me against my angry enemies, you know? And let me tell you, the enemy is after you not because he just wanted to. It's because you opened doors that you're sorry about now, you know? You know that you deserve the enemy to come after you, but you're really sorry. And God comes after the sorry, repented heart. It's not by because we are better or anything like that. It's because of this. It says here, you, Lord, will always treat me with kindness. It's because of the kindness of God that we will have it. We have not, we have not been swallowed by our enemies, right? And so we give him the glory today. And he says, the psalmist says, your love never fails you have made us he had made you what you are don't give up on us now god is not giving up on you so listen that thing that you feel right now is just the experience of never wanting to go back to that god of this world that treats you bad after what after you sin and you and sin catch up with you God is extending his hand. I say, I see your heart. I see your true heart. And let me tell you, you can do this today. The enemy you see today, look. Look one more time. Because you will see them no more. Thus says the Lord. Blessings. It's going to pass. This too shall pass. And you will never go back to that sin. God is guaranteeing that because he sees your heart. Blessings. that with all my heart. I believe God is speaking this morning and from early in the morning because my wife said that she, um, you had a dream, right? No, I heard God, you know, what I did, what I did, let me go because Eddie now is in the little speaker here. What happened was, is that I was getting ready and I heard me screaming in that car, Jesus! But this, that, that really happened to me in real life. And, and then I went to do my own thing and then I just opened the Bible and it fell in that scripture. And then I just, you know, went about like, you know, like if it was something like a reminder of, you know, of my life and, and the, you know, what God has done for me. But when I got here, then I heard that scream again and I went to get my scripture and then Rachel started to scream the name of, I mean, just worship in the name of Jesus and Jesus and Jesus. And I knew it was for you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. God is good. All the time. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Hallelujah. Woo. It's crazy. You see, um, <clears throat> in this channel, every morning I, I put up a video. And this morning, if you go back, you're going to see that this video has a lot to do with what she's talking about. <laughs> it's crazy, boy. It's crazy, boy, how God speaks. Amen. Amen. But today, today I want to talk to you guys about faithfulness. Amen? And I was talking about this subject in the men's group on Wednesday. So um, I guess you could put there on your title, those that take notes, faithfulness. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And I'm going to start with scripture. And oh, by the way, today we're going to have communion. So get your elements ready because after the service we're gonna we're gonna break bread with the Lord. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. So um like I was saying, the scripture that I wanna start off with is in Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse nine. It says, Therefore know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generation with those who love him and keep his commands hallelujah praise the lord i was i, I was talking to my son-in-law he was talking about that scripture he's like you see that's 
that's not only for me and my generation, that's from generations to generations. Amen. But I want to look at this verse a little bit and I want to 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 show you something that it says in the verse. It says who keeps his covenant with those who what? Love him and keep his commands. Amen. So, how many of us love God? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. How many yeah. of us love God? Yeah. Yes. So, the second question that it throws out there is, and those who keep his commands. How many of us keep his commands? Amen. Yes. <laughs> it wasn't that powerful, but, but I have a word for somebody today. Amen. God promised faithfulness to his people. Amen. He promised faithfulness to us as well. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I have been looking at a, a pattern. <laughs> There's a big old giant wasp up in here. But I ain't even worried about it. I ain't even going to. God is in control. Amen. Amen. L listen to this. I've been looking at a pattern that's been going on lately with my with what, how the Lord has been speaking to me. And, and the last three messages that the Lord has been talking to me has been what, it, what I talked about two weeks ago. Seasons. Amen. Think about this. God was talking about seasons. And then last week, what was he talking about? God's calling in our lives. Amen. And this week, he's talking about faithfulness. So something, I believe with all my heart, something is about to happen to me. Amen. And I'm not going to get bit by a wasp. So don't worry about it. Keep your eyes on, 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 on the preacher today. Amen. Listen, I believe something is about to happen to me. Or... Something is about to happen to us. Amen. Who could say something is about to happen to me? Something is about to happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> something good is about to happen to me. Hallelujah. So let's go to the New Testament. Second Timothy chapter two, verse thirteen. It says, If we are faithful, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself let me show you this translation in the living bible because i have this living bible boy that thing is is alive the bible is alive but li li listen to what it says the tlb bible it says even when we are too weak to have any faith left he remains faithful to us and helps us for we cannot dis for he cannot disown us who are part of him think about that if we're part of him, he will not disown us. And he will always carry out his promise to us. Amen. God is faithful. Who could say God is faithful? God is faithful. And if we remain faithful, he is faithful. Not only to us, but to our generations. Amen. Like Deuteronomy 7, 9 says that, Therefore know that the Lord your God, He is God. He is faithful who keeps His covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love Him and keep His commands. Hallelujah. How about those that are not faithful? We could just go down one more verse. Verse 10 says, And He repaid those who hate Him to their face. To destroy them, he will not be slack with him who hates him. He will repay him to his face. And that's what it says. I'm just... So those that are not faithful, you're going to get what's coming to you. Those... I, you see, I, I see I see stuff out there on, on the news and on media and stuff. People mocking God and doing this and that. And, I, and, and then I read this verse and I'm like... Man, you shouldn't be doing stuff like that. 
If if you're mocking the Lord, if you if you're making fun of the Lord, you shouldn't be doing stuff like that because let me tell you, he says he repays those who hate him to their face. You see, I look at this scripture and what I see is the judgment seat. Because one day we're going to see him face to face. To destroy them, he will not be slack, it says. He's not going to be slack. With them who hate him, he will pay them to their face. We will see God to face to face one day. So, I feel sorry for them people. Honestly, we need to pray for people like that. In the church, having drag queen hour in the church, showing our kids what LGBTQ is all about. Like, how... Or, like, where is God in all that? I thought we're supposed to show our children about Jesus Christ. Isn't that what God wants for the church? I, I, I don't really understand all that, but it is what it is. So let me, let, let me start throwing scripture out there. Hallelujah. I'm going to be in the CEV Bible. That's that's your that's the Bible that you have. <laughs> the what's my wife calls it the what's up Bible. Psalms thirty three four. It says, For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his works is done in faithfulness. Hallelujah. So we can see here that the Bible is faithful. God's word is faithful. Amen. Psalms 91.4 says, He will spread His wings over you and keep you secure. His faithfulness is like a shield or a city wall. What did they build city walls back in the days for? To keep you protected. Hallelujah. His faithfulness keeps you protected. Hallelujah. Thank you. 2 Thessalonians 3.3 3. It says, But the Lord is faithful, and He will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. God is faithful. Amen? So how about us? Are we faithful to God? I'm going to give you the definition of faithful. This is in the Webster Dictionary. 1828 it says fidelity loyalty firm adherence to alliance and duty as the faithfulness of a subject true as faithfulness of God this is in the dictionary strict adherence to injunction and to the duties of a station as the faithfulness of a servant or minister. Strict performance of promises, vows, covenants. Constantly in affection as the faithfulness of a husband or a wife. How many faithful people do we have in the house today? How many faithful people are out there that are listening to me right now? How many, how many people could type on their screen, I am faithful to the Lord? I am faithful. I am totally faithful. If you can't not type that, you need to change that narrative in your life. Because you know why? Because God wants to fulfill some promises in your life. Hallelujah. God wants to fulfill some promises in your life. Is it hard to be faithful? You can say, well, it's hard to be faithful. The flesh, the, the devil is after me. Whatever. Listen to what 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says. It says, no temptation has overtaken you accept what is common to mankind. And God is what? Faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. 
But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Who believes that? Amen. Amen. So we can be faithful to God because he gives us the ability to do so. Amen? Amen. You, you might say, well, the Bible only says that, you know, God is faithful. It doesn't really say that we're faithful. But if we go into Psalms 119.90, it says, Your faithfulness continues through all generations. You established them on earth and endured them. Now let's go to Exodus 34.6. And it says, and he passed, this is God, amen, God is faithful. And he passed in front of Moses proclaiming, the Lord, the Lord, compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abundance in love and faithfulness. Let me show you how it starts turning this around for us. 1 Corinthians 1, 9. God is faithful who has called us into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ. Listen to that scripture real good. God is faithful who has called who? Us. Into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So if we go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, it says, listen to this. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Think about this for a second. Let me put these verses together. Our faithfulness to the Father has called us to have a fellowship with God. Amen? We're his son. So we need to hold fast to what confession? Of our hope without wavering. What did we confess? Lord, I want to be your son. Lord, I want to be your daughter. Amen. Our confession is to follow Christ. Amen. So if we follow Christ and Christ is faithful, this means what? That we need to be faithful. Right? Without what? Without wavering. Hallelujah. Whew. Did you guys get that? It's quiet in here. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. It says, Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because His compassion will not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. <laughs> Hallelujah. To me. Hallelujah. Numbers 23, 19. God is not human that he should lie. Not a man, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does God, does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Does he? No. He, why? Because he is faithful. Amen. So you might tell me today, well, Pastor, I know God is faithful. But right now, nothing is happening in my life. Nothing is happening in my life. Everything that I thought was supposed to happen is not happening. I can't see anything. So we go back to two weeks. Why? Because everything has its time. Amen. God has a perfect timing for everything. Hallelujah. And that's why God gave me these messages. About season. And I dare to say something today. We could delay God's promises. Amen. I want you to put that in your mind. We could delay God's promises. Let me give you the perfect verse about what I'm talking about and what's going on in this world that we're living in today. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 through 25. It says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we, pros we pro profess. 
For we, for he promised. Let me back. I'm going to back that up real quick. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. So what is he saying here today? God has a promise in our life. Amen? He has a promise in your life. He has a promise in your life, your life, your life. And let me tell you, he says, his promise is going to happen. And that's what God is telling me this throughout these messages. You're about to walk into God's promise. You're about to walk into God's promise. But God wants to prepare you for that day. God wants to prepare his people for that day. He's telling people today, I am faithful, but I want you to be faithful also. Listen, and it says, and let us consider how we may spur one another towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encourage one another and all the more as we see the days approaching. Encourage your brothers and sisters. Let me tell you, I, I, I have a men's meeting and my wife has a women's meeting and we're way out here in, in another place, but we're still meeting with, 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 I'm still meeting with the church, with my brothers, with, with my friends, and we're still getting together and I'm encouraging and they're encouraging me. And every day I throw something out there to encourage the body because that's what God wants. Amen. Verse 24 says, And let us consider how we spur one another on towards love and good deeds. We need to keep doing this, ladies and gentlemen. I thank my wife because I didn't want to do no men's meeting. And she told me, you got to do the men's meeting. And I said, okay, I'm going to do it. Now I don't miss. I don't miss. Every week, it don't matter where I'm at. I could be in the hotel. I could be wherever. That's the, the beauty of it. I could be wherever. The week before, it was my honeymoon. I said, baby, we're going to go eat early because I had got men's meeting. I need a spur on my boys. I said, yes. And she said, okay. <laughs> Amen? And that's what God wants. And we don't see this anymore out there. Everybody is for themselves nowadays. There's no faithfulness out there. There's no faithfulness even in the church. Before, people used to say, we used to shake on it, right? Our word was a commitment. Now, people tell me, oh, pastor, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to do that. Are you going to be faithful to your word? Or are you going to do whatever you feel like? It? You understand what I'm saying? Before, people used to agree on a deal, like, okay, we agree on this, we shake on it. Nowadays, you can't even trust a document. That's so true. People trying to get over you with a, with a, with a notary and everything, document and notary and everything. Oh, no, this and that. Let me tell you, I've seen some crazy stuff. My cousin told me a story about some person that tried to buy some stuff, uh, uh, a timeshare that they had, and man, that person did everything. It looked like it was legit. Signed papers, everything was like, and it was a scam. Yeah. There is no faithfulness out there. But God is saying, I want you guys to be faithful. Because I am faithful. And I have a promise in your life. And I want to give it to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. But everything has its timing, ladies and gentlemen. Everything has its season. Like I, like I read in, in a couple weeks ago in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. I'm going to read it again. I love this verse. It says... In verse 1, it says, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Hallelujah. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck what is planted. 
it's time to pluck what's planted. I, I, I'm thinking, like, God, you ready to give me some stuff? I was showing my wife and Samantha this morning my little lemon tree. That thing is full of lemons, boy. Thank you, Jesus. It is. It's almost time to pluck. I can't take them now because they're not ready, but they're going to be ready pretty soon. Amen. I'm going to go and catch some fish so I can have some live. I can put <laughs> A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh. That is so true. There's going to be a time that things are going to get hard. It is going to get hard. But then it says there's going to be a time of laughter, a time of mourn, and a time of dance. Who's ready to dance? Woo! A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing a time to gain and a time to lose a time to keep and a time to throw away think about that think about that verse six a time to gain a time to lose and a time to throw away sometimes we got to get rid of what is already not working amen a time to tear down a time to sow a time to keep silent, a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. What profit has the workers from that in which he labors? I have seen the God-given task with which the Son of Man are to be occupied. He has made, listen to this, verse 11, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Hallelujah. Thank you. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work God does from the beginning to the end. I Listen, listen to, I know you guys are looking at that, but listen to this one verse, the end of this one verse. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, he says, Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, Except that no one can find out the work that God does from the beginning to the end. I don't know what God is doing. I don't know what God is going to do tomorrow. But he is faithful. Ecclesiastes. That's verse 11. Uh-huh, chapter 3, right? Yes. Whew. We don't know exactly what God is doing, when He's doing it, how He's going to do it, and what He's going to do. And But all I know is that God is faithful. Who can say God is faithful? God is faithful. Hallelujah. He's faithful. I have a, a, a tree outside. A low quad, cum quad, whatever they want to call it. And I have a, a couple of trees, and I put them over there so... We left out of town and the sprinkler stopped working and the trees died. Like, <laughs> things got crisp. Like crispy. Crispy, crispy, crispy. And I'm like, well, they're dead. They were dead. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just keep giving water. I'm going to keep putting water on them. Whatever happens, happens. You know what I mean? I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to keep giving water. And all of a sudden, the tree is sprouting now again. Like, more than before. Because everything has its timing. Like, before I had leaves up here and, and, and a couple of branches with leaves. Now, it has leaves throughout the whole thing. The whole thing is full of leaves. And it was dead. Everybody's looking at me here like, yeah, watch. When you go back out there, you're going to see that thing is full of leaves. I'm like, what, Lord? And and it's funny because I had two of them. The other one is is not giving no leaves. The other one looks dead, still dead. And and but like I go back to that verse, and if there's a time to throw it away, I'm not gonna throw it away. I'm gonna keep watering it because I'm believing that God is gonna do a miracle. So don't give up on what hasn't been growing also. Amen? And, and let me tell you what the funny thing about it is that the one that's growing has an ant pile inside of it. 
I don't know if that has to do with anything, but let me tell you, that thing is full of ants. And that thing is sprouting all over the place. But I'm not messing with the ants because they're red ants. And, <laughs> and I'm going to just let it grow in his time. Amen? It's growing against adversity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we look at verse 6, it says, Time to gain and time to lose, time to keep and a time to throw away. Whatever the Lord wants. Amen? But what, what am I going to be? I'm going to be faithful. Amen? God is telling us today, I want you to be faithful. And this is the big problem that we see today. That people... Cannot wait for God. They cannot wait for that promise that God gave them. They cannot wait for that child to be saved. They want to try to do things on their own or whatever whatever circumstance. They can't wait for that husband. And then they hook up with some guy that 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 God didn't even it wasn't even God part of God's plan. And they have a terrible marriage. You understand what I'm saying? I'm, I'm throwing stuff out there. They hook up with this Chinese guy at, at China Lee and that's not the one. That's an inside joke. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you know what happens when we try to do things on our own? We mess up what God is wants to do in our lives, amen? And everything falls apart. The tree was dead. How was I how was I gonna fix the tree? I didn't have no idea. I said, well, I'm just gonna water it, you know what I mean? Because it died because it didn't get no water because the sprinklers stopped working. So I'm gonna just keep watering it. It wasn't like I had a special potion in there. Like, oh, I got a special potion. I'm going to put it in there and, and I'm going to put a cross in, in the bottom of the root and, that, and that's going to make it grow. No, no. I didn't have no special nothing. I just waited. And I just kept doing what I was supposed to do. And that was to give it water. And that's what we need to do. We need to do what God has called us to do. And that's to be faithful. Faithful to what? To His Word. Amen. Nothing is happening in your life right now. Stay faithful. Why? Because he is faithful. Don't give up meeting together with your brothers and sisters. Don't stop going to church. Don't stop listening to Pastor Eddie bringing the message, bringing you a word of encouragement every day. Because God is about to do something in your life. That you're not even expecting. And you're going to like, wow. I know I could feel it. I've been telling my family, I, I, I could feel something is about to happen. Because we need to stop going around in circles. And we need to trust that God is faithful. Amen. And God is going to fulfill his things in your life. I want to tell you guys this secret today. It's my time. <laughs> it's, it's my time for God to fulfill some promises in my life. <laughs> my wife is like, it's cool because if he gets fulfilled, I get hooked up too. <laughs> I'm in. My situation, maybe your situation looks dead right now like that thing ain't nothing gonna happen. I can't, I can't even see it. I can't even see it. Like, really? Like, what's going to happen? Everything has fallen apart. And nothing looks like, like God promised all kind of stuff. Marriage and this and that. And finally, there ain't nothing else. A house and I don't see nothing. I don't see nothing. <laughs> but let me tell you, God is faithful. Am I going to do this on my own? I'm going to let him do it. Let God do what he needs to do in your life. 
Everything has a season. Everything has a time and a purpose. Who could say, it's my time now? It's my time! You, and people could type that in there. I bet you a lot of people type. You want to type that in there? Type that in. It's my time. Of course I can type that in. It's my time. It, but let me, let me tell you a little secret. It's not your time. It's my time. <laughs> <laughs> it's my time. I don't have to fight for your time. Let me tell you. Let, 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 let's do something powerful this morning. Afternoon. Evening or afternoon. Let's do a confession. Yes. Yes. Amen. Because there's power in the tongue. Yes. There's power in confession. Amen. So let, let, let's say this this morning, this afternoon. Lord, forgive me for my unfaithfulness. Lord, forgive me for my unfaithfulness. Today I take hold of your faithfulness. Today I take hold of your faithfulness. Through my faithfulness to you. Through my faithfulness to you. From this day forward, from this day forward I'm going to be faithful to you. I'm going to be faithful to you. In everything that I do. In everything that I do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Now I'm going to bring up my wife up here. We're going to have communion. Great is your faith. God is faithful. Hallelujah. He's faithful all the time. And all the time he's faithful. Hallelujah. So we're going to get ready for communion. You know, God heals. How God heals is not only say he not only does he save, but he heals. And, and that's what uh, the cross is all about. The cross is the front and the back. And um, some of us need the back. And I want to encourage you that if you're not safe, you know, if you don't know the front of the cross, that today is a great day for salvation. Today is a great day that you can reach out and tell God that you love Him. And if you don't feel that love, that allow Him to show show His love towards you. Because the reason why I love God is because He loved me first. So why don't you just, you know, for those that are saved, if you are if you feel like you are limping, spiritual lim limping, it's a good time to check your heart and and allow God to. Um, to do, you know, what he does best, put things in order. Ask for forgiveness if you need so, because, you know, we need to be worthy of taking the bread and the blood, right? We don't just do this, you know, just because we do it, but because we are reverent in doing it. But if you want to take communion and you're not safe, I want to tell you that this is a great opportunity to invite the first part of the of what God did for us. It was to save us. Because what is to be healed in our bodies if we go into hell, right? It's, it's just good time here, but eternal damnation. We're not doing that, right? So all you have to ask is, Jesus, say this after me. Jesus, Jesus. For, thank you. <laughs> Father. Jesus, Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my sins. I believe that you are the Lord. I believe that you are the Lord that died and rose for me. And rose for me. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I don't know how to change. I do not know how to change. But you change me. But you change me. Today. Today. I know. I know. I am not on my own. I'm not on my own. On this journey. On this journey. Because I have surrendered. Because I have surrendered. My life to you. My life to you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. Amen. You're ready for communion. Hallelujah. Okay, so. Amen. The Bible says it's a great thing because communion was when Jesus was with his disciples and he did this in the Lord's Supper. They call it the Lord's Supper. And, and he says, do this in remembrance of me. So we do it every month. And it's, and it's beautiful because we, we acknowledge his sacrifice. We acknowledge what he did on the cross. The broken body, the blood, the, for our sins, everything. Amen. And so that's what we're going to do today. And the Bible says in 
in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23, it says, For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took the bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat of the bread. In the same way after supper, he took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us drink. Hallelujah. He says, For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time of communion, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to come together with my brothers and sisters out there, Lord, and have communion together, Lord. And just thank you for the blood. Thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you for the body. And thank you for, for our lives, Lord, that are surrounded and are in you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I just want to encourage you to stay faithful. It's His faithfulness in you that makes you faithful. God bless.